Hi and welcome to Swedish Plant Case. In this video we talk about root-bound plants. Now what is it? What are the symptoms and signs and how do we handle it? If you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up that really helps our channel a lot. Subscribe to our channels for more videos and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Now let's go! So what is a root-bound plant? Or rather, when is a plant considered to be root-bound? Well, it has to do with the roots and the pot. And basically it means that the roots are everywhere in the pot. So the pot has become too small for the roots of the plant. Now in nature, roots don't have a barrier to work with. They can grow exactly how they want to. They have to compete with other roots and stones and such, but they can go around that. But when we take it inside and put it in a pot, you have a barrier. And the barrier here are the walls of the pot. So when the roots grow and grow and grow, they hit the barrier. And then they turn and they go the other way and they hit the barrier again. And then they turn and so forth. And in the end, what happens is that the roots just go around and around and around the walls of the pot. And this is what we call a root-bound plant. So why is this a bad thing? Because we usually talk about root-bound as a bad thing. Well, a couple of reasons. First of all, when it starts to look like this, when you have almost all roots and no soil in the pot, what happens is that there are no soil or substrate that can absorb water, hold water, and then distribute that to the plant. So what usually happens is a root-bound plant cannot get enough water because the water either goes on the outside in, bene in between the walls of the pot and the roots here, down to the bottom, or it can get some water through the system but almost no, none of that water is absorbed and hold. So what happens is you have a lack of water. Now, in the other way, you can say that you can also get a lack of air because when this root ball here gets to be extremely dense, the roots inside of here cannot get any air. The air cannot get through here. And when a root cannot get air or oxygen, it starts to die. So that is another problem. Now another thing is of course nutrients or fertilizer. When you try and add fertilizer to your plant and it is root bound, it cannot access those nutrients because it cannot be distributed to the roots properly. Now all of this means that the plant gets stunted or the growth stops. So, in the long run, it can actually harm the plant to the point where it actually collapses because it doesn't get water, it doesn't get air, it doesn't get any nutrients, and in the end, the roots collapse and the plant die. Now, I want to add here that there are plants that actually likes to be a little bit root-bound. Not all plants hate this because there are a variety of roots that actually likes to be dense like this. And for instance, we have the CC plant, the Samiculca samifolia here. It loves to be a little bit root bound. And we have the snake plant or the Sansevieria, or which is now called a Dracaena, also likes to be root bound. And the Bocania recuvata here, the ponytail palm, likes to be root bound. But when people say that, they actually mean that it likes to be a little bit root bound. Because a little bit only means that it is contained within that container. It, it stretches that container. But when it gets to be severely root bound, when it doesn't get water, air, then you have a problem even with those plants. So what are the signs and symptoms of a root-bound plant? What should you look for? Well, the most common thing is, of course, that 
your plant starts to get roots coming out of the drainage holes in the bottom. This is the most common indicator that the plant is starting to get root bound because it doesn't have anywhere to go so it starts to go out of the container. Now it could also start to send roots out from the top here. When that happens it's severely root bound but know that just because you have some roots coming out of the container doesn't mean that your plant is root bound. It only means that you need to consider that and needs to start reconsider a report or do something about it in a while because it doesn't have to be root bound just because you have roots down here. But if the roots come out from the top here then it is time to do something about it. Now another way of knowing that it's starting to become root bound or is root bound is that the pot itself actually starts to bulge. It, do, it, it doesn't have the round shape anymore. It's actually shaped more in a triangular form here because this CZ plant is just trying to crack the pot and it actually succeeded as well because it has started to break down here. Uh, so that is another sign that the, you could have a root bound plant is when the pot actually starts to get a different shape. Now another sign is that the plant could start to crawl out of the pot. If you see that it's actually starting to rise up like this, you can see that the soil or, the, or if it's just roots here are starting to come up. You can see that the whole plant is just rising, rising up like this. That usually means that the roots are so massive that it's starting to push the plant upwards. Usually it's when you have a pot that is slightly edged like this because then the roots are pushing down and it's starting to come up like this. Now if you have any of these signs what I recommend you to do is to try and take the plant out of the pot and take a look at the roots. And when you do that, if it looks like this, where you have roots almost everywhere, and especially when you have at the bottom of the pot, you have almost like a thick carpet of roots. They're just everywhere and you, you can't even see the soil anymore. This is an indication that you have a root bound plant and then you need to do something about it. But there can also be symptoms on the plant itself. It doesn't have to be the pot or the roots that is showing you that it's root bound. The plant itself can have symptoms. Now this Bocania here actually has one of those symptoms and you can see here that this Yucca elephantipes or uh, spineless Yucca here also has an indicator. Now that indicator is that the oldest leaves, the smallest and oldest leaves underneath here are starting to turn dry brown. I think you can even hear that as well. It's completely dry. Now this is a classical sign that you have underwatered your plant, but I know that this plant is not underwatered. I water it regularly as I usually do. I've not forgotten that, but it's still getting these symptoms that it's underwatered. Now the reason is, like I said before, that what's happened is the soil here cannot absorb water anymore because there's so much roots. So the, so the water either goes on the side of the pot or it goes through and then straight out of the pot. So even if I water the plant, it cannot get that water. It cannot absorb that water and use that water. Now another symptom to look for is that the plant can start to wilter. What I mean by that is that you see that the leaves are just starting to hang down like this. You, you can see that something is wrong. And when you try to find the reason or the problem, 
you can't really find it because you, you've watered as you should, you've given fertilizer and nutrients, but it's still wiltering. You haven't given it too much water either, but something is wrong. That can be an indicator that you have a root-bound plant. Because like as, like as in the same case as before, it's not getting the water it needs, so it's starting to wilter. Another sign can also be yellow leaves or brown leaves as well on your plant. But know that when you try and find a problem and you can't really figure out what the problem is, always check the roots to see if it's root bound. Now the last sign or symptom is that your plant just stops growing. It looks stunted. It hasn't happened anything with your plant for months. This could be an indicator that you could have a root problem or a root bound problem. So when it stops growing, you don't really know why, take a look at the roots. So you have the symptoms, you are considering that your plant could be root bound. What I said before was check the roots. Take a look at them to see if you're right or if it could be something else. Now this can be a problem because when you have a root bound plant it could actually be hard to remove the pot from the plant. It can be really really stuck. Now first of all if you have a lot of roots coming out from the bottom of the pot here they can actually form a form of carpet outside of the pot here you could have to cut off those roots. Now you can try and just gently tease the roots to see if you can untangle that carpet and then you can try and pull it out of the pot. But if that doesn't work it's not a problem to use a sharp scissor or shearer and cut off some of those roots to be able to pull the plant out. This is not a problem it will not harm your plant. What I mean is that you will not harm the plant by cutting off those roots outside of the pot uh, because you have to do that. So if you have little roots or if you have a lot of roots don't be afraid to cut to be able to pull the plant out because otherwise you will eventually lose that plant. So it's better to cut those roots than to lose your plant. Now if you don't have a lot of roots coming out of the pot but you have symptoms, you want to check the roots, what you can do is that you can take the plant and if you can't pull the, the pot straight off, just use your hand, try and hold the stem or stems or whatever which way you have on your plant, try and hold the plant, then you take your other hand and gently squeeze the pot from different angles on top, on the bottom, just try and squeeze it like this. What happens is that the roots here that are a little bit bound to the walls of the plant actually lets go. So if you do this, you could eventually try and just wiggle it out of the pot like this. Now this method can be quite hard if you have a large plant. If you have a huge plant like this ficus here, this ficus lurata here, if it's a big plant it can be quite difficult to squeeze the pot and try and wiggle it. Now another way of doing this is to tap the top of the pot here. So we try and grab a hold and if you can't do this yourself, get some help. Someone can hold the plant for you and just hold it up, then you take your other your hands, you can, if you have two hands available, you can do it on both sides of the pot at the same time. Just try and gently tap the edge of the pot here from both sides in a swift manner. But do it gently and then you can increase how hard you do this if it's not helping. But just gently tap like this and it will probably come off. Now if it, this, pot, this plant here is not root bound, as we can see, we don't have that type of root system in this plant. 
if you had had that, it can be quite hard. So you have to hit that edge of the planter quite hard. Now, if the plant is extremely root bound, then you might not be able to do any of that. This CC plant here, it, it, the pot here is really, really bulging. Uh, and there is no way that I can try and hold this and get the pot off without harming some of these stems of the CC plant here. So what I recommend you to do, I know that there are a lot of people re recommending you on YouTube and on Google to try and use a knife and push that knife down along the side of the wall of the pot here and just try and move around to let this loosen up. Never do that because our experience is that when you take a knife and shove it down here, you're going to harm a lot of the roots. You have to go the entire way, all the way around here with the knife and you're harming roots all over. What we do instead is that we take a shearer and make sure that this shearer is cleaned so you're not transferring anything to the roots here. But you take a shearer and you cut the pot. Now, this is of course to be able to save the plant and to do as little damage as possible. But in this case, you take the shearer and you just try and follow the pot all the way down. Now, try and be as close to the pot wall as possible so that you're not cutting a lot of roots on the way. Just try and be as close as you can. Sometimes you can even pull the pot like this. Now, there, I felt it snapping. And now I can take it off. And as we can see here, this is exactly what it should look like when you buy a CC plant. A lot of roots everywhere in the pot. As I said before, this is a plant that likes to be a little bit root bound. So this is what it should look like. So when you know that you have a root bound plant, you have three options. The first option is to repot your plant into a larger pot. The second option is to repot your plant into the same pot again, if you haven't cut it open. Uh, and the third option is that you can divide the plant. Now this is of course if you have a type of plant that can be divided. So now I'm going to show you the first option, to repot in a bigger pot. And as we usually say on this channel, when we repot, we, for most indoor tropical plants, we repot in a slightly bigger pot. Because if you go too large, what can happen is that all of that soil will be moist for a very long period of time. And that could potentially harm the roots. So we have the yucca elephantipis or spineless yucca here that needs to be replanted because it is root bound. And as you can see, it is in a very, very small pot here. So I've actually chosen a pot that is slightly bigger than I usually recommend. So bad of me here, but I think that the end result for this large plant here will be fine in this pot. And it's not a huge pot, so we'll use this one. Now, the first thing you need to do is to remove the pot here. Now I know that this removes quite easily. I just push a little bit around it and it comes loose. So what you want to do here, first of all, is that you want to try and untangle this root ball, this extreme root ball here, as much as you can. And I always recommend you to start by using your fingers. And don't use gloves for this. Use your fingers because then you can actually feel if you are doing too much because you will feel the roots snapping. If you have gloves on, it is harder to actually feel that. So use without gloves. And just try and see if you can untangle some of these roots. Now, it is not a problem if there are roots that start to break here. What will actually happen is that when you break a 
thicker root. When it gets into new soil and we, you start to water this, it will send out new fine, fine roots. And those roots are actually better than the older ones. So you don't have to worry if you're breaking a couple of roots here. It's not a problem. Just try and untangle. It, if it's not possible, I can see here that this is going to be really, really hard because this root ball is basically only roots. Then you can use some tools. Now, you could use, from your garden, you could use a rake like this and just try and rake and untangle as many of those roots as possible. However, I find, usually find that a rake like this works best when you have a large plant, like the ficus behind me here. That would work perfectly. But when you have smaller plants or smaller pots like this, I actually use a fork. Just use a normal fork from your kitchen and bend them a little bit. Of course, make sure that it's okay at home to do this, but I, I've also bent it like this as well. So it almost looks like a rake now. It's almost the same thing. However, this is a little bit smaller and it's a little bit easier to work with. Now you can just use this and try to untangle as many of the roots as possible. And as you can see, this tool actually helps me to get into that extremely dense root ball. And you can probably hear as well that there are roots that are going to break, but it's not a problem. Just try and go all the way around. And loosen as many of the roots as you possibly can. As you can see here, there are a lot of roots breaking off and even falling off, that's okay. We have so many roots here that it's not a problem. As you can see now, I'm actually starting to untangle a lot of these roots and they're starting to just hang straight down because a lot of these roots were moving in this direction because they couldn't find any soil, they couldn't find anywhere to go, so they were just going around and around and around. Now, if I just took this plant and repotted it as it was before in this larger pot here, the roots would continue to grow like this. And what would happen is that it would take quite a long time before the roots started to, ah, I can go outwards or I can go downwards because it would continue to grow like this. So by doing this, you're actually helping the roots to find that new soil that we're soon going to be giving it. Now, I only use the tool, let's say, around half, half of the root ball here. On top here, I'm not going to go in with a tool. I'm just going to use my fingers again and try and remove as much soil as possible, just without doing any harm to the top here. Because if you start to go in with a tool up here, what could happen is that you could break all of the root ball from the plant. So only up to half with a tool and then you try and use your fingers up here. It's okay if you can't get much of the roots here untangled. Up here it's okay, they can be tangled. Just try and remove as much as you can. And then I can try, now that I've used the tool, I can actually try and untangle even more of the roots by hand. There, I think I'm quite satisfied. This looks harsh on the plant, it looks harsh on the roots, but I'm actually helping the plant because when it gets that new soil now, 
It's going to thrive. It's going to love it. Now I'll put that aside. For this repot, I'm going to use a soil that has good drainage. Now, what is that? Well, if you use a standard planting soil, what could happen is that that can absorb too much water. And especially for a spineless yucca like this, that likes the soil to dry out in between watering, you need to add better drainage. So I'm using standard planting soil, about 70%, and I mix that up with some pumice. Now you can use leica instead, or you can use perlite instead. Just something that breaks that hold of that water and may, creates a better drainage. So we add some soil to the bottom. You can always check to see how much you should, you should need in the bottom. When you have the soil in the bottom, I always use my hands and just try and gently tap the soil. You don't want it to push it, you don't want it to be compacted, but you want it to be a little bit more compacted than just by adding it with this. So just slightly press it a little bit. Then you take your plant, put it down to see. Always make sure that you have the same level on the stems as you had in the previous pot. I think it's looking quite good there. And then you can continue to repot. Use your fingers again, just slightly, gently push the soil Try and get it down on the side of the walls of the pot. Because you do not want any air pockets down here. You want soil or pumice everywhere inside of this. And you want the plant here is quite large. It's quite heavy as well. You want it to sit in the pot like that. And then you can add some more on top. There you have it. Next step, of course, is just to try and clean the plant from all of this. And then you have a repotted, formerly root-bound plant. Now, it could be that you, for some reason, cannot repot in a bigger pot. You have your favorite plant, you want it in that window, and it will not fit if you repot it in a bigger pot. So the next step is that you could take a root bound plant and repot it in the same pot again. Now the first thing you need to do is to make sure to get the pot off. Now if you want to use the same pot make sure that you're not harming the pot so you can never cut the pot because then it gets lost or you can buy a new one that is the exact same size. Just push the sides of the plant make sure to see if you can get it out and when you've gotten it out, we're going to use the same pot here. Now to be able to fit this into this again without being root bound, we need to remove a lot of these roots. Now will this harm the plant? No. Uh, it will get a little bit stunted for a short period of time. Uh, but as long as we're not removing too much of the roots, it's not a problem. We have a code here that usually say we never remove more than one third of the roots. But our experience is that we, you can actually remove up to half the roots and it's usually not a problem. But we try to use one third of the roots goes away. Now, which of these roots should I remove to be able to fit this again? Well, the first thing we do is that we remove this small carpet that is at the bottom here. This is just an extremely dense 
part of the root system here. And I'll remove that by just cutting it off by using a sharp scissor. Make sure that the scissor is cleaned so you're not transferring anything from the scissor to the plant. So I'll just make a cut here and I'll try and remove, let's say it's about a centimeter of the bottom here. As you can see here, it is a complete carpet of roots. It doesn't come off and there is not much soil inside here. It's basically just roots. So we'll take that away. Now the next step here is to remove all of the loose soil around the plant. So just use your hands and try and remove to see, gently see what comes off without doing something extreme. When you've done that, you take a look on the underside of the root ball here and you try and do the same thing. Try and remove as much soil as you can. Try and untangle if you still have tangled roots here. It's okay if some of those roots start to break, but try and be gentle because you've already removed quite a lot of the roots here. Now I can see directly that it's hard for me to do anything because it's so dense. So I'm actually going to use a tool here. And this tool I've created myself. It's a fork that I've just bent like this. So just use that fork and try and gently tease the roots and take away some of that soil. Now we only use a tool like this up to around half of the root ball. So I'm not going to go up here to use that tool because it could potentially break off the entire root ball. So I'll just slightly use it, gently use it down here. Just tease those roots, try and get them untangled. You can also use it underneath here, try and untangle those roots as well. Roots as well. Like that. Now this is ready to be repotted in the same pot. So we start by seeing how much new soil can we add to the bottom. Okay. And I'm using the same soil here as I did in the previous step. Uh, this is a mixture of standard planting soil and pumice. Now this has a really thick trunk here, which is almost at the sides of the wall of this pot. So to get the soil and pumice here down in beneath the wall and the pot here, and I cannot, I have, my fingers are too thick, I cannot push the soil down. But, but by just slightly tapping the plant like this, tapping the pot, that soil falls down into the pot. And then you can add more. There you go. Now, only thing that is left is to, of course, to clean this, take off all of these, and the plant will love this. Now, if you do it like this, if you repot in the same size of pot, you have to do this 
quite often. I figure that this uh, Bocarnia here will actually be root bound again in maybe two years. So we'll have to do this all over again if you want it in the same pot again. So the last option to help your root bound plant is to divide the plant. By doing this you can actually get two, three, four, maybe ten different plants from the same plant. Now I'm going to try and do this with this CZ plant here because this is really root bound. Uh, as I showed you before we've cut open the pot here to get it out of the pot and I'm actually going to plant, let's, I'm going to see how many plants I can get from this. Now concerning the CZ plant you actually need one tuber, those potato like bulbs down here by the roots, you need one of those for each new plant you take out from this one here. So I'll, I'll have to see how many tubers are inside here because I can't see now. Yes, I can see some here. We have one cluster of tubers here. This is actually one tuber here. But we're going to try and divide this plant to see if we can get more plants from this. So the first thing you need to do and the easiest way is not to start and try to just bend this apart. We'll have to try and tease the roots and take away some of this soil and perhaps it will start to fall apart by itself. The CC plant, it's not sure that that will happen with the CC plant, but with most other varieties when you're going to divide them, as soon as, soon as you get rid of some of this soil, it actually falls apart. So we'll see what happens. Now, I cannot use my fingers for this because this is pure roots. There are just roots everywhere. So I'm going to use my tool here again, just this bent fork here. And I'll just try and tease off as much of the soil as possible. But be careful, like you see here, as soon as the soil goes away, we actually have a tuber underneath here. So just try and tease around. And as soon as you find soil somewhere, we can see that, oh, there's no tuber here. You can actually try and go inwards as well. Go as deep as you can, because you want this to fall apart by itself without you pulling it. But we'll see if, there, if we can manage that. Don't be alarmed if you're harming some roots. It's not a problem, as long as you're not harming all of the roots, you're fine. There, I've gone all the way around trying to gently just tease out the roots. Now you can go to the underside and try and tease some of those roots as well. Just get that soil out of there and perhaps we can get this plant to divide. If we're lucky. Now I'll see if it wants to start to fall apart somewhat. Now I can see that I have a huge tuber right here. I have a cluster of tubers there. I have one there. So I'll just try and grab the stems that I see are attached to the different tubers. So I'll grab a hold here around these stems. And then I'll try to grab around these here because I can see that it's actually starting to loosen. There is one new plant. Two. 
I could probably get three out of this, but these tubers are so close together that I would probably keep it like this. And from that one plant, we now have three new plants. Now, this is quite easy. All you have to do now is to follow the steps we said before and just try and repot these into three different pots and you have three new plants. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps our channel a lot. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do hit the bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram where you can get sneak previews on upcoming videos and sometimes a little bit more. Now until next time, how you doing?